most important factors of athleticism is ATP, our universal energy unit. Now you've probably heard time and time again that creatine is a very effective ATP supplement, and that's 100% true. It's one of the most studied effective supplements on the market. But the fact is that ATP levels drop during exercise, and creatine takes way too long to get them back up. It's something that you should definitely be using daily, but what can you use to keep them up in the acute sense? Well, we're gonna be talking about Peak ATP today from TSI. It's a patented oral ATP supplement. And honestly, we've talked about it plenty of times before in products, but until we sat down and really dove into the data, we didn't consider it as important as we 100% do now. It's got a triple mechanism of action. It's got significant effects on athletes. And I don't know why we don't see it in more pre-workouts, both stim and stim free right now so put on your science caps and let's get talking about peak atp now peak atp is 100 percent an atp supplement it's atp disodium for max stability and solubility but in a lot of ways it's really a concentrated blood flow ingredient only requires 400 milligrams it's a very small serving size so it can fit into a lot of applications like pills or powders and based on the systematic review on atp disodium that was published in march 2021 very recently researchers found over 10 different studies where oral atp disodium peak ATP here was shown in randomized controlled trials to have a significant benefit for health and athletic performance. Now, the idea is that we want this energy flowing in our system. That's why we call it the energy currency molecule that we use. But definitely go check out our blog post if you're interested in the deep dive on the biochemistry of this. Our motto here is where subscience meets the iron. So I try not to spend too much time on deep dives on science, though sometimes we end up going that direction. For this video, I'm gonna really be talking about the supplementation of this and what it's gonna do for people. If you're interested, our writing team went super, super in on ATP containing chemical energy and phosphate bonds. If that makes any sense to you, I 100% recommend you go read that. But if you wanna know what it'll actually do for you in the gym, keep watching and let's talk about it. The big takeaway here is the first law of thermodynamics. Cellular function, like everything else, is subject to this law. Energy can neither be created or destroyed. So if you consider a human cell as a closed thermodynamic system, every single energy expenditure within the cell must be balanced by an equal amount of input. The free energy released by hydrolyzing free energy phosphate bonds and ATP molecules, again, that's, this is kind of inadvertently getting into science, just hold on a little bit. That creates energy input, allowing the cell where the hydrolysis is taking place to then expend energy on other useful tasks. In other words, no free energy from ATP hydrolysis, no cellular work. And without cellular work, there's no cellular functioning, so lack of ATP can lead to cellular death. So this is a very important thing to be putting into your body. Now, when we talk about energy and energy currency, a lot of people will say, well, you know, I just take caffeine. That's a fine thing. Caffeine's an awesome supplement. But when we talk about ATP energy versus stimulant energy, you're talking about real functional energy energy with no jitters, no crash. I hate to use the word clean, but that's really what we're talking about here versus stimulant energy like a caffeine or something else in the market that is short-lived, it's jittery, it's got a post-rush crash, and it's not actually really energy if we're being honest about what caffeine actually does. And the big deal here is that ATP is consumed during exercise. It's consumed at an elevated rate during exercise because you're doing work. Stores of ATP in muscle tissue can significantly decline. You guys should be training intensely, right? So let's talk about what the research shows about peak ATP. First off, it shows a single dose of ATP disodium improves lower body resistance training. So this is not something you have to take regularly, although we will recommend that you do. The first single dose significantly improves lower body resistance training. Now this study's from 2019, so it's relatively recent. And this was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. In a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study with a twist, instead of having two separate populations, the subject served as their own controls which is good two different workouts for one workout each subject got an atp disodium in the form of peak atp and for the other workout they got a placebo now this makes it easy to compare to themselves because obviously different levels of training have different levels of growth and it would be best if we controlled them against themselves now obviously subjects did better with the atp i wouldn't be here talking about this if they didn't but what's shocking is the size of the effect it had on the placebo side subjects lifted an average of 3995.7 kilograms per workout but after taking pktp they lifted an average of 4967.4 kilograms per workout and we're talking about overall workload here. That's a 25% in total work performed. That's a significant change. Now, this was a relatively small sample size, but big effect size. So let's move into another claim that we're going to talk about here a potent nitric oxide booster. Now, we know that exercise is one of the best ways to take care of cardiovascular health. We're talking about strengthening the heart here over time. So, what does this have to do with ATP? Well, in one study, researchers discussed, quote, once released, ATP binds to the purogenic receptors on endothelial cells, binding results to the endothelial cells, releasing 
nitric oxide via endothelial nitric oxide synthase and smooth muscle vasculature via cyclic guanosine. Now in one study where oral disodium ATP administration showed post-exercise increased ATP levels, it also showed increased muscle excitability and athletic performance after repeated sprint bouts. I'll put a graphic here from this study which shows the difference between using placebo and using ATP. Honestly, I probably don't need to explain this to you because it shows the difference between having a deficit of ATP and actually having extra after your workout. Again, ATP is supposed to drop during exercise, so this is rather significant. Now, in one study, 400 milligrams of, of peak ATP taken 30 minutes prior to exercise, when you usually take a pre-workout, for one week led to improved blood flow after elbow flexor exercises in men compared to controls as measured by ultrasound. Now, there's a lot of different ways to measure blood flow, but for this one, they use ultrasound. These blood flow improvements continued post-workout as well. So it's gonna be great for recovery as well as just the pump during your workout, which we all love. Now, second to last year, we've got ATP disodium increasing total body strength, vertical jump power, and muscle thickness. This is a 2013 study published in the London-based journal, Trition and Metabolism. Again, 400 milligrams of PKT TP for 12 weeks. This was actually even diet controlled, so even better. They actually used the big three, squat, bench, and deadlift, a study after my own heart as a powerlifter. One rep maxes were taken at baseline and throughout the study period. Now, researchers recruited resistance trained males, so this is not like they're taking like just people off the street and making them powerlift, no matter what, you'd see an increase there. The fact that they were already resistance trained is a good sign for this. Now, obviously both crews, if they're diet controlled and training hard, getting pushed for this by a research team, their one rep max went up on all of these, no matter what, even in the placebo group. But again, disodium, the ATP disodium group gained more strength. The strength increase in 12 weeks on all three lifts combined, your normal powerlifting total, was about 55 kilograms. That's a lot. The Americans watching this video that don't know anything about kilograms because they don't watch powerlifting and even powerlifting who don't care about kilos because we live in America, that's 121 pounds on their total. Between squat, bench, and deadlift, all three together increased 121 pounds in 12 weeks. That's significant. Now, when it came to vertical jump power, again, they outperformed the placebo group by about 15%. And finally, the ATP group also gained significantly more muscle group than the placebo group. They were studied by ultrasound and increased about five millimeters, whereas the placebo group only got about half of that increase. Pretty cool. Now, lastly, we talk about torque during resistance exercise. In 2012, there was a study from JISSN showing that subjects were randomized with either ATP or placebo, took for 13 days, and then performed three sets of 15 knee extensions on a machine that measured their ability to produce torque throughout the exercise. Subjects who had been using ATP disodium, PKTP, has significantly higher peak torque and fatigued significantly less than the placebo group. So overall, better strength, better torque, better time to fatigue, as well as more muscle being gained. Overall, PKTP is an awesome ingredient that I'm hoping to see in more products. Now, there's kind of like three different ways that PKTP does all this stuff. First off, through anabolic signaling, second through enhanced muscle contractions, and lastly, through blood flow improvements. All of these things are important parts of the hypertrophy and strength gain process. Now, from one study, Wilson et al. in 2013, they said this, quote, It has been reported that the half-life of infused ATP is less than one second. ATP is rapidly taken up and stored by erythrocytes. This rapid uptake by erythrocytes is central to its role in affecting blood flow and oxygen delivery to oxygen-depleted tissue. Specifically, there is a tight coupling between oxygen demand in skeletal muscle and increases in blood flow. Erythrocytes regulate this response by acting as oxygen sensors. When oxygen is low in a working muscle region, the red blood cell deforms and releases ATP. The result is vasodilation and greater blood flow to the working musculature thereby enhancing nutrient and oxygen delivery. Long-term oral administration of ATP has been shown to increase both the uptake and synthesis of ATP in erythrocyte of rodents. Collectively, these findings suggest that the oral ATP supplementation may elicit ergogenic outcomes in skeletal muscle without elevating ATP concentrations. So not merely the addition of ATP to the system, but the acute blood flow mediation is really what they're looking at as a mechanism of action for all these kinds of benefits. Now, overall, we've seen PKTP in a lot of really fun products like Concept X from Beyond Raw at GNC. AP Regimen use it in their legacy pre-workout, which we were big fans of. We also see it on its own in some places. So I would definitely recommend grabbing some and trying it out on your own. Now, I do have to say, we do have a business or affiliate relationship with TSI, the company that owns the patent on PKTP, but I hope that this content was more helpful in helping you understand the ingredient and maybe looking for it in pre-workout in the future. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.